Okay. Uh, Tim, can I ask one question, procedural question? And this is just for my information and curiosity. Uh, this, you know, the applicant is an upstanding member of the community who knows the regulations and supports historic preservation ardently, and so is the architect, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so are we uh, having this session because they requested? Um, actually, let me get the meeting under uh, sure. way. Uh, and and then we can we can address that. Um, I'm just curious. It's, no, well, I, I'll address it. Um, any applicant um, can come f before the commission yeah, yeah. Uh, with uh, uh, with a um, pre application, especially. Yeah, that's what I mean. That, that eventually will require an application. So, yeah. and in this particular case, John would put this forth uh, procedurally as something that will need an application. So yeah. that's yes. that's why. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, a call to order, uh, quorum being present, uh, this meeting of the Annapolis Historic Preservation Commission shall come to order. The commission operates under uh, uh, pursuant to the land use article of the annotated code of the state of Maryland. Requirements for serving on the commission are detailed in chapter 21, section 8.06. The HPC operates pursuant to the State of Maryland Open Meetings Act and therefore no pending application shall be discussed between or among commissioners outside a public hearing to determine the disposition of any application. Um, first uh, on the agenda is our roll call. We have Bill Williams. Here. Kim Finch. Is she good on you? There she is. She raised her hand. <laughs> okay. Uh, Bobby Collins, who serves as vice chair. Here. Will Scott. Here. Kevin Smith. Here. And I did not see Leslie. Um, uh, I am Tim Leahy. I serve as chair. We have with us John Tower, who is our uh, staff. And Kimberly Consoli is our recorder who will make sure we record um, the minutes of tonight's meeting. Um, very short agenda tonight. Uh, we have one item of, only one item is not new business, it's a pre-application. And um, so Josie, if you could promote Sure, Joe and Michael. Mm -hmm. Michael and Joe. They've been promoted and should be able to share screen. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey, Michael. Hey, Joe. Hi there. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Okay. Should we start? Of course. Yes. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. I'm, um, I'm Michael, here on I'm, the... right now I'm only seeing a blank screen. Is that what you intend? I don't mind if you see me. Yeah, I'm I don't a... see that. There. There you go. There's me. I don't there quite have Boris Johnson here, but I'm trying to get there. All righty. Um, well, welcome, Michael. Um, uh, this is a pre-application um, and uh, is a, um, a courtesy extended to uh, potential applicants, but nothing uh, that we discuss among commissioners tonight should be construed as our approval or disapproval of a, uh, a future application. And um, I just need you to acknowledge that that's the case. We, I, I understand. And, and uh, the idea is to to uh, present a, a concept that uh, Joe and Sharon have been thinking about for uh, the house and realize that after uh, discussions and we will in the future be submitting a, a formal application right. for a public hearing to review uh, the project as it, as it right. develops. Well, um, tell us what you'd like to, uh, us to know and we'll have a conversation. Um, are you able to share, share your screen okay? Can I, okay. Let me open up a pro 
open up. We have seen a lot, all all of the commissioners have had an opportunity to look at it in in their drive. Uh, but if you could share with us and walk us through with what you'd like us to okay, do. Well, wait a minute. I have to, uh, I have to click share screen, right? I'm going to share my screen and go here. And uh, I hope, here, yeah, can you all see it? Yes. 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 Looks yes. great. Uh, what we're dealing with is a, a project, a potential project for uh, the Rand, Rand, Bordley Randall House on Randall Court off a of state circle in, in Annapolis. And the idea is for a, a window renovation. Uh, we want to add a window to the structure uh, to provide additional light for the master bedroom uh, in, in the building. Uh, this is a site plan. Uh, the subject area here is here, state circles at the bottom of the, the screen. The principal facade visible from state circle would be uh, looking down here, the next, this is a detail of where we're study, studying the subject area. So uh, let, me, let me go back for a minute. And you know, this is the principle, oops. I'm, I'm gonna make you all sick by doing this. Uh, so we're looking to add a window on the uh, northwest corner facade of the, uh, the addition to the original uh, 18th century house. So we are looking at, um, here's a floor plan of the existing second floor. Uh, state circle again at the bottom. The subject area we're looking for is, is in this corner here. So we're proposing to add a new window in this location here. These plans show how the house has uh, expanded and changed over the years. Uh, the original house, second floor here. Um, you'll note that there are no fireplaces on the second floor in the, uh, when it was first built. And uh, records show that people uh, were kind of cold. Uh, then there was an addition towards State Circle, which was used at, as an office and nursery. And then uh, the major addition, was done to the rear um, and shows how that has changed over the years. This is a, how it stands today. Now this is a color keyed to the different changes over the year, black being the original house and various shades of gray being changes um, to it over the, over the years in the different periods. So it had a long history of changes from the 1760s all the way up through uh, the 60s and the 1990s when it was a show house. So um, it, it's no stranger to changes, adaptations and revisions. Uh, when the addition was done on the rear, certain windows were blocked up and changed, fireplaces were changed and added and internal partitions have been added over the years as well. So, uh, the, the Bordley built it first and then the Randalls added onto it later. So again, uh, our proposal is to add a window in this corner here to uh, space it equivalent to an existing window on the second floor as well. This is uh, the primary facade is uh, what you see from State Circle. Uh, I would call this the uh, secondary facade or second primary facade. This is viewed from the garden towards the uh, north. Okay. This is the, uh, what I would call the secondary facade, which is visible from uh, the uh, alleyway as you come in from Prince George Street. And this shows uh, the uh, Bordley addition here uh, with its punched windows chimney and, and dormers. So this view shows oblique view of the subject facade we're looking at here. It's a totally uh, brick facade, undifferentiated with any windows whatsoever. 
So here's a straight on shot showing the, the dormers that match the other side, the chimney, et cetera, and the brick brick uh, facade here. It's, the brick, it's interesting. There is a, it's, un, it's exposed brick on that Northern facade, but this side has a wash, a paint wash on it, a kind of okra color here. And uh, it is visible that there's been some repairs and other things over the year. This facade is, has a um, partial obscured winter view from College Avenue, but is, I would consider it, I mean, a tertiary facade um, of the building. So again, these are the windows that we're thinking of the, the proportions that we want to replicate in the uh, proposed window that we want to add in this facade. So here's the existing conditions here. And that a little detail of the, that west elevation and a quick drawing showing it and what we're proposing to, uh, what we're proposing to do. We want to have, it's, it's a brick masonry building with punched windows. And our plan is to uh, add a window on that second floor in this northwest corner to provide additional light and view from, for the master bedroom for their uh, interior use and uh, base it on the proportions and scale of the window on the uh, east wall that I showed earlier. Uh, this just shows it a little more detail of the proportion. And at this point, uh, the idea would be to differentiate it from the existing window, uh, but at the same time, make it compatible and sympathetic in proportion and, and general uh, configuration and layout. But the trim, uh, the trim here, the jack arch, uh, the sill would be deep, and as well as the opening with different headers and stretchers and, and to make up the, the opening uh, would be uh, modified to again, be sympathetic, but at the same time uh, different to differentiate this new work, this 21st century work from the work that was done in the previous uh, three centuries. Okay, I want okay. to go back just a minute to point out that the all the kind of major defining details of this facade, the uh, dormers, the roof, the cornice, the overhang, and all are remaining the same. Um, all we are proposing to do is add a window in the facade and the next I think believe oops I don't it just shows the general kind of what we would be doing uh, all these these are all uh, preliminary measurements we would uh, base this on the existing the cornice and the roof overhang would remain the existing brick is to remain we would select the demolition uh, by hand for the opening uh, we would retain the brick and then develop our design for the windows, windows here. Again, while the uh, guidelines call um, discourage new openings in historic fabric, they're not prohibited. And we feel that in, uh, we're keeping the uh, vocabulary of punched windows in, in the masonry. Uh, the detailing will be sympathetic. The proportions will remain the same and kind of continue what we've seen, we see throughout the rest of the, uh, this edition this 19th century addition to the 18th century building. So, um, and that's what we're planning to do. And uh, we'll welcome comments from <laughs> the commissioners and, and I'd be happy to answer any, any questions. And perhaps, you know, Joe, if you want to chime in and indicate, you know, a background of, of, of why we're going ahead with this. Sure. Um, the, essentially the, the room on the second floor in that corner is our master bedroom now. Uh, and it has a complete northern exposure for the two windows that it does have. Uh, and as the commissioners, I'm sure, are aware, um, northern exposures are good for growing mushrooms. Um, we don't get a whole lot of light, natural light in there. And so we're seeking to add the window to get more natural light in the bedroom. Um, 
if we don't um, proceed with this plan, we will probably look at moving the bedroom somewhere else on the second floor, which will involve modifying some of the rooms to make closets and that kind of stuff uh, that aren't available um, in the other rooms. And it would be just a, it would be a bigger project from our standpoint um, to move the bedroom than to add the window. Okay. Yeah, adapting the plan, uh, a different part of the plan, uh, uh, Joe and Sharon are, have been taking great pains to maintain as much original fabric inside the house and outside as possible. And uh, moving the master bedroom suite and its requirements would probably may, may require some additional uh, effect on that. Uh, I think what we're proposing is kind of like the minimal uh, approach to get to, to solve this issue. And I think that what we're developing by, by picking up the vocabulary and, and uh, things that have been done before or previously in the building, I think we're uh, trying, we're remaining sympathetic to that. And I, I think that working on this kind of same vocabulary in, in the building on this uh, kind of the tertiary facade of the, of the building. Okay. Right. Well, thank you. Um, to go back to uh, Will's original question, yeah, this is an extremely important building um, in the historic district. And that's why um, I think um, John Tower said, let's go to a pre-app and make sure that the commission is on board with this. So Will, did you have a question? Yeah, just a um, sort of point of information for me. And I don't know whether to ask it of you or John or both. Um, in the guidelines, uh, is the reason for a proposed um, alteration even within our purview? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, I mean, it's nice that Joe explained why they want to do it. It all makes sense and everything. But uh, it, it, so I'm happy to have the information as a as a commissioner. But is that a justification upon which we can make any decision? That's, that's a well, valid in a, question. In a different case, Will, um, yeah. let's say uh, someone, and this isn't this case, in a different case, someone uh, needs to uh, put in uh, a ramp, uh, let's say for uh, a wheelchair or mobility. It would certainly be the, uh, uh, the case that that would be explained by uh, the building's owner as, as a necessity. I'm not saying that this is the equivalent to that, but knowing why uh, uh, there's there's a motivation for the proposed change is is part of of what we consider too I think okay thank you I have a question um, um, I'm not sure whether I'm asking Michael or Joe but whoever wants to answer can um, is there a reason you went for just a single window on that that new facade as opposed to two, which would make it match the opposite side? I'll take that one. Um, the yes, there is a reason. Um, the original building. I mean, what what Michael showed you was the floor plan of the original main block. Um, this is a five part, um, can you back up to the garden picture, Michael? The garden picture? Yeah. The no. picture from the garden, that one. Um, this is the Bordley Randall house is a five part, um, I'm not going to get the period right, so I won't say it, um, mansion that was built 1750, 1760, somewhere around there. Um, the east wing, which you see on the left side of the picture, um, is pretty much intact um, and in the form that uh, it was originally built. Uh, there, the west wing on the right-hand side of the picture was originally the um, 
same form as the um, east wing. Um, however, when the when Alexander Randall and his and uh, and his second wife died, um, the sons um, took the west wing and inflated it hugely, um, turning it into a four bedroom house for the four spinster daughters uh, who ended up never marrying. Um, and the, uh, so you can see it's much larger um, and it extends out well past its original footprint uh, into the garden. Um, and if we were to put a second window on the, um, I'm going to call it the inboard side, the south, the south, the southwest corner of that bedroom. Um, it would have a sterling view of the roof and bedroom <laughs> of the Western Edition. Okay. Um, which, um, Bobby, this is Sharon. Yeah. Hi, running late. Sorry. Um, in answer to your question of why we didn't, we're not proposing two. In addition to what Joe has said, we're trying to make sure we don't create a sense that this facade was created with a double set of windows. And if you'll note, on in the original part of the house, when this wing was added, they punched windows in, and on the Opposite side, they only did one because they only had room for one and they only needed one. So again, we're trying to do the house's history the way the house actually developed and respect that and make sure that the changes we're making have precedent on the building rather than trying to create a false sense of history that these windows were always part of the Randall addition. Okay, very helpful, thank you. Okay. And you can see actually on the photo, Michael, if you go back to that photo you just had. This one? Yep. You see that window kind of underneath the first gable? Yep. That was punched into the wall of the Randall or of the original Bordley facade when they added the Randall wing because they took away the windows. The way the other uh, ones. On the other way. So again, yeah. it's, so we're trying to respect that precedent on the building. Makes sense. Yep. And I, 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 I would just want to emphasize Sharon's point about, uh, you know, the two windows uh, with that symmetry that we see on the east side uh, would kind of indicate that, oh, that was how they did it originally because it matches the other side. And we want to also with the detailing of the window and the opening, uh, make sure that it, it reads as a sympathetic, uh, well-proportioned, compatible, right. uh, opening, but not being a historic opening. Yeah. But I, I wonder that I, that all makes perfect sense. And um, I think we can take that into consideration. Um, I think, Will, your, your question was, is the intent or um, importance of a change something we take into account? And I think um, we try to get to yes uh, with, uh, with our applicants and um, and their reasonings can be important. Like if it's a life safety issue or something like that, it's quite compelling. Yes. Um, and, and so I understand where you're going with your question is what I'm saying. Yeah. And, if, and if, if, I may, if I may add, um, prior to um, going live, Will asked why <laughs> we are looking at this pre-app. Um, <laughs> And the, um, the intent that I expressed earlier as to whether, which way we go with this um, window is a deciding factor in a larger project. Um, and so we would like guidance from the HPC at this point so we know whether or not we should ask be asking Michael to design a window 
or to design a lot of different things on our site. That's a good point. Yeah. Right. That is, that's an excellent point. And if I may address what Tim and you have said, Joe, um, and to be direct about it, uh, the fact that you want uh, more light in your master bedroom, to me as a historic uh, district commissioner, doesn't really mean a whole lot. Yeah. But, but, and, and would not make me more or less likely to um, approve what was proposed. But what Sharon said, especially about trying to respect the nature of the building and its evolution and not create a false sense of history, that's exactly the way I looked at this whole project when I saw what you had submitted. This is a building that's grown and not grown with some um, overarching plan that each stage uh, followed, but it's grown organically as the residents needed it and wanted to do it. So what you're doing to me is completely in the spirit and preserves that uh, sense of organic growth to fit the needs of the residents. So, you know, yeah. I don't, I try not to let the applicant and there's their, what I know of their reputations and, and, and um, other factors affect my decision one way or another. But as I said earlier, the fact that you and Sharon are the applicants and Michael is the architect, I would have said yes when I looked at the documents. But I, but I appreciate our discussion. Uh, <laughs> I think, well, this is wonderful. And, you know, um, it's a great discussion to have um, on the record because yeah. um, it, this is a great example of an applicant coming forward to say, we want to try and do something, but if you don't agree with it, we'll, we'll change what we're going to do. And it may be a different application, but if you don't agree with this basic thing, um, this basic change, um, then we'll, we respect that and we'll go for it. So I, I thank the applicant. Yeah, the I, would, I would say this is, to me, this is a perfect example of we're all uh, reading from the same playbook. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, can, I, can I ask a couple of questions here? Yes, yeah. that, now the normal procedure mm -hmm. here in the pre-application is we ask staff comments and then we'll go around the commissioners for their thoughts. Is it is it time for comments? It is time for staff comments, John. Okay, so uh, I don't know the exact distance uh, of this facade from College Avenue, but I imagine that it's over a hundred feet. Would you say that that's accurate? Probably, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's pretty far off uh, College Avenue. Difficult to see. Um, About a hundred and. It's, it's, it's over 100, are, I'd say. Are you getting to the point, John, of primary uh, facade, secondary facade? Well, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, bringing it, I'm bringing it up that it, uh, uh, it's hard to see to begin with. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's also not uh, uh, an articulated facade. It's a monolithic facade. And um, that sort of uh, large brick expanse uh, occurs in in other houses of the same era, but I don't know what what motivated it. Uh, it was just a design element of huge expanse of, of brick. Um, Early brutalism. <laughs> you know they're expensive. Well, I'm I'm not sure, but in in any case, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, that if there is proper differentiation between existing and what is planned uh, or proposed uh, to be installed uh, with its uh, great distance from uh, College Avenue and only uh, a, a seasonal view uh, of it and that is uh, obstructed, um, then commissioners should be aware of that. And that's, uh, it's, this is, this is the loneliest facade on, on uh, on the house, it just is. Uh, I'm familiar with the house, and uh, not a lot goes on there. Um, and so, uh, the question for me would be: How how do you plan to differentiate this from the existing, so that uh, if if approved, it really doesn't create a false sense of, of history? Well, that's uh, as as. 
I don't, you know, it's in the details and we're still, we're beginning to explore, but we will be exploring that. I mean, one part is, you know, how do we do the closers and the headers and the stretchers as we uh, make the opening, uh, the whether to do a, how the jack arch, you know, how we detail that, do we do splayed bricks or do we, you know, we're not gonna mimic what's there. Um, so that's one of the things. Uh, while the proportions of the window remain, uh, we want to keep that punched opening. I think it's important to keep the propo proportions, but the detailing of the, ca the casing or the trim, um, the width of the styles and, and the meeting rail, et cetera, as well as how the wood sill is detailed. Those are all the things that we have to get into and, and work out to make a, uh, as part of a formal presentation. And hopefully we, we can do that. I mean, I, I think we want to be we want to differentiate, but it, we don't want to, you know, make it a uh, poke in the eye uh, with a p totally contemporary detailing, um, which in some cases could be an, a, an approach that would work. Yeah, but, right. But John, that's, that's, that's the crux of the issue that right. we Well, I don't, I don't see it as, as a necessity to uh, differentiate it to, to the point where uh, uh, it, it, it makes its own statement. Um, I was thinking uh, uh, possibly of, of the arch, as, as you mentioned, or even a brick sill, something that just makes it uh, different. The small details of the window that are, that are subtle, but obviously uh, something that, that uh, wasn't original right. to the yeah. house. Yeah, you know, I, I, I would I, agree. You know, I could, if I could um, ask a question here as the applicant, um, do commissioners have specific things they want us to stay away from as we try to differentiate in very subtle ways? Um, or are there suggestions from commissioners that would be helpful to us at this juncture? Sharon, if I may answer that, um, I was thinking of that while uh, John and Michael were talking. The only people that are really gonna notice what we're talking about are wow. other people similarly wow. interested and knowledgeable your neighbors yeah uh and so if you did something like have a simple brick arch that um I, I don't know all the options that would be available and appropriate but if you did something to change the arch over the window from the arch that's on the other side that would be something that would call catch the eye of people such as ourselves but not the average person okay. so so I would feel like, oh, you know, there's something going on here. Let me think about what it is. But you wouldn't be making me think this. You, you'd make me ask, mm -hmm. are all these windows created at the same time? Right. OK. Or not. So That's that helpful. would be Thank one you. suggestion. Other commissioners, comments on that thought? A differentiation is important here. Yes. Um, if I could, if you don't mind. Of course. Um, I've been sitting there staring at this and real thinking about <laughs> the fact that it has that oh. on the brick. No matter how this is opened up and the walls, the opening headed off, you're going to have a clear differentiation in the brick that's installed. Even if they clean up and reuse the brick from the opening, it's going to have clean sides. It's going to have issues where the material immediately around is going to look like a patch. Yeah, that in itself is going to differentiate. And that's something that even to hide would take another 50 years, 60 years to get that, to have a patina, even if it ever did, considering the wash that's on the building. With the arch at the top is, maybe it's not an arch. Maybe we have a lentil in there with soldiers running across. It's something that is not what would be a brick structural item. So it's definitely a modern item, but it still represents that, um, that head. Uh, the window itself, that's detailing in general. The sill, that's detailing. Brick is, might be a good option. Stone could be an option, a precast could be an option that would slip in there. Um, I don't mind the wood stain, honestly, the, um, just the appearance of it. Uh, it doesn't follow the same um, 
knives that they use to cut the sill with. It's slightly different. Given its height, any small detail differentiations probably won't be that noticeable. So it's going to be the major items that make yeah. the difference as to whether it stands out or not. And anyway, that's my babble. Just <laughs> no, good. Feeling right now. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Other with questions? People, with what people were saying just had me thinking. That's all. Well, differentiation is an important part of any application in, for a new alteration. Um, other commissioners on this Yeah, topic? I have a comment and a question. Yeah, um, I was going to sort of disagree with John Tower on the visibility of the facade it, from North Street there. Um, I was out there today and it is quite visible because it's raised up and set apart. Um, I don't know if that, I don't think that changes anything, but that angle, you can see it from North Street if you extend out a little further. I mean, if you were um, there. So I think it is more visible than John was letting on. Um, but the question I have is the windows on the opposite side underneath the dormers don't look like they're the same size. Um, what the new window would be closer to size to which of those two do you think? Yeah, are those the same size? It, it doesn't look like it. Hang I on. think that might just be the photograph. If we're all looking at the photo that's on Michael's screen at the moment. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they are identically sized, believe it or not. Um, the optical illusion here may have to do with the fact that this side of the house has no foundation under it. Randall was a bit of a cheapskate when it came to the structural side. And this part of the house is drooping down several <laughs> inches. So the windows don't, they're not- They don't align. Yeah, they don't they align. Look like they're not the same size, but they are. Okay. Great. And, and just to clarify that so the window you're proposing is pretty much identical to this? Correct. Well, the punch? Well, it's a punched window. And at this point, we were looking at uh, keeping the proportions. Yeah, the proportions. And again, differentiation would say that you don't have to have it identical. Right. And, and I think some of the comments that uh, I've just heard, you know, are, are starting to make me think, you know, they're, they're that, like I said, we, right. Getting to the details, that's going to be the fun part for me. It's very difficult, sure. as you all know, that idea of subtle differentiation yeah. uh, will work. We have to work on it. That's good. So, Kevin, Kevin, did we answer your question? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, the, the picture doesn't make them look the same, but if they are, that's yeah. great. Okay, yeah. You're good catch, though. Thank you. If, one more item, if I can, while we're looking at this picture. Sure. Try to pick out the details on these windows right now, on these pictures. Of course. <laughs> um, how far it's, are we from, where do you have to be to actually start seeing those details? You're in the, you're uh, 40 feet away. <laughs> in their yard. Feet, feet, yeah, feet in their yard. On the other side, you're 100 feet away or plus. Yeah. Um, the differentiation is going to come from large differences more than small ones. Sure. At least at that by the public view, not by the um, private view. Right. Okay. Other questions, comments? Um, and back to Kevin, Kevin's point, I, I want to emphasize that um, our review, um, the HBC's review, is a, a, all around the property, regardless of whether it's from the a public view or not, and if you can see it from a public view, it is more important. But every every um, aspect of an alteration of a, of a historic building is important. So um, I, 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 we we can say that primary views are more important and are held to a stricter standard and possibly less more lenient on other views. But it is. Kevin's point is that you can see this and it, this is a very important building. So I just wanted to have all of us remember that we, we do have 360 um, degree review. And I, I, so we want to re 
all, all applicants should understand that just because you can't see it from the public way doesn't mean we shouldn't be reviewing it. Um, so I'll get off my, uh, <laughs> I, um, it's a my, high my soapbox. <laughs> um, <laughs> other comments or questions from commissioners? Um, I'll, um, I, I do want to draw our, our back to um, to the the application does touch on as again as small as an application is it does touch on many of our, our, our guidelines D seventeen being um, the biggest one which is discouraging new um, openings in existing buildings um, and I, I think I would like to ask the applicant. Um, it, it, are they going to be able to, uh, do they intend to hold on to the brick that is removed um, and um, reuse it in any other way in the reconstruction? Yes, I mean, that, that you know, that's, that's the idea. And I, I, I think it uh, was kind of indicated earlier uh, by someone that, you know, even if we're reusing the brick, um, it's, it's, so it's going right. to, but the idea is to maintain, is to retain it uh, for uh, use here as we develop header closers, et cetera. Uh, but also uh, imagine, Sharon and Joe, you could even keep it on site. Oh, and that would be no problem. We'll put it down with the door more with the 18 doors that are exactly. from the building that are no longer. That, that's that's yeah. generally best practice. Um, they will, but, they will stay with the building. And it touches on a and it touches on um, a, a, the Secretary of the Interior standards. Um, this is a, you know, distinctive finishes should be retained. Um, characterizing, you know, any, anything we can do um, to preserve existing material should be preserved. Um, uh, so the question then to commissioners, do we feel like that this application is um, compliant and feasible uh, given D17 and the Secretary of Interior Standards in terms of feasibility? Does anyone think it's not feasible? Like, that's an easier way to think of it. All right. I think that I'm hearing everyone feels that this application should move forward. Um, to summarize, um, then the um, this application for an additional window is feasible with the guidelines, uh, as we had stated earlier. I think one instruction to the applicant is explain a bit more in terms of the detail of the header and the framing of of, of the window to differentiate from mm -hmm. prior construction uh, i will add one more thing on one uh, there's a window from this view what we're seeing right now the window i guess to the east um, was added at, at a certain point. It shouldn't mimic that window. So you should differentiate that one. <laughs> right. Right. So it's not the same. It was not done at the same time. I think right. the longest discussion we really had was differentiation. Yeah. Um, so just I think for, that... for clarification, all three of those windows you can see on that mm, uh, interesting. were inserted. They were not original to the Boardley construction. Mm. Yeah. So the new window shouldn't um, give the false impression that it, it was added at the same time. Right. Yep. Right. So the jack arch shouldn't mimic the, uh, the I think that the jack arch is a, probably an important feature. Right. So um, that's really only the, the guidance I think we would provide that from a, if it's feasible from a guideline point of view, uh, differentiation will be important to show in the final application. Yes. Um, 
Commissioners, did I reflect our points of view? Yep. Yes. yes. All right. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time and the we insights. Look, we look forward to the perfect. full application. Thank you and happy birthday, Will. Uh, thank, thank you, Joe. Will. Did you finish your boat yet? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> How many boats have you built? This is the second. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm very, very impressed. All right. Thanks. Um, thank you. Uh, again, thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, commissioners, um, we have only, um, we have other administrative business. I just wanted to have a, a, a brief conversation um, regarding furniture. Um, and Jody, uh, I think, am I able to share my screen? Mm -hmm. uh, you be able to. Yeah, um, I just want to. I, I just want to bring you up to date on furniture um, in market space uh, furniture guidelines. We've gotten only one comment so far, um, and it was basically in support of. Um, well, you could. I'll send it to you, but it basically was. In, in, the concept is important, but don't be too strict. Is I think what I will summarize. Other than that, we haven't gotten any other comments. Um, an action item that I had with John was to follow up with a document that would um, show uh, applicants what would be considered uh, compliant with the guidelines that we approved last month and those that wouldn't. So um, I did send that to John. So Jody, can I share my screen? Wait, did you mean Josie? Sorry. Josie, I'm sorry. Sorry, I just heard Jody. Uh, yeah, you should be able to uh, share your screen. Are you having trouble? Uh, share screen, there it is. Oh, you mean push the button that says share screen? <laughs> <laughs> now that one. That one, I just wanted to show you all. Um, Is that your dog, Will? That is my dog. I'll uh, mute you. No, my my dog wouldn't bark at you unless you came to the front door. All right. My, my well, dog. I'm very happy to hear a dog bark. Down on the first floor. No, I. I it's so okay. It's seven. <laughs> it's seven. It's seven fifty. Um, but I just wanted to have a brief. I didn't want to thank you all for, by the way, for meeting tonight. This was a short agenda, but it ended up being a really fruitful discussion. But I, I just, I wanted to show you all and get some feedback um, on pros and cons on what I would like to give John for things that would be approvable and not approvable under the things that we approved, you know, the guidelines we approved. And these are guidelines, but it's important, I think, to have visual. Um, so does that, does that make sense? And you all have like yeah. 10 minutes to go through this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the first thing I did was furniture. And um, by the way, if you all have like an hour on your hands, this is a blast to just go through and see what you come up with. So, all right, here are two sets of furniture. Um, metal, um, simple in design, right? Again, metal, simple color, mm -hmm. pretty simple in design. All metal. <laughs> now this design will come back to a bit later. This design also has the possibility for um, resin um, input and colors on the bottom row here. We're going for um, muted colors. Wood. Um, I think stackable is important for our, our customer, yeah. our benches and <laughs> benches and Picnic tables are going to come up. These are all wood and they look good. This is a Victor Stanley. This one here uh, is our, uh, the city of Annapolis's preferred um, vendor um, for outdoor, uh, outdoor public furniture, very durable. And so look at the designs that they come up with. Um, mm. And by the way, they're based in Calvert County. Um, wow. 
great. And Victor Stanley is also great. Um, here we go. Now, here's where I get into, yeah. if these are durable and made of wood, um, starting right. to get a little. A little Parisian. For the rattan or whatever the weed is, doesn't seem to hold. There's it. Paris right there. Yeah. yeah. But right now, I would, I, I will be, uh, I'll say if we, what's the word durable? What's the word wooden? Um, this is pretty much what right now um, uh, McGarvey's is taking from the inside outside to their, they're doing these, this type of tone A chair. Um, and, and so these are on the border of, so we have to, how, what is durable? What is outdoor furniture? How do we stack that? I don't know. Tim, can you go down a little? So the one on the left is, is a preferred design. From the, the um, they expressed that to me yesterday. Yeah, yeah, actually, John, as usual, I didn't let you talk first. No, 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 no. This is, <laughs> but you've been talking with the, these guys. So what, what are you hearing? based well, on what I just said. You're exactly right about uh, uh, stackable. They want stackable. Um, and uh, they, they do want to comply. Uh, they have this design on the left, the lower left out. Uh, it's, uh, it's all over market space. Uh, they all seem to, uh, to like it. I'm, personally, I'm not crazy about it. However, um, it just, my own experience. I've had the one on the right. I love the way they look. After about mm, 20, 30 minutes, you're ready to get up and leave. That is by design. <laughs> you know, eat your food and leave. It's, it's time for you to go. Uh, and that's, probably, that's true with all of all of these, these uh, uh, chairs. Um, they're, they're not for, for long sits, but, but that, that one on the lower left is, is uh, the yeah, it's got really focused on. It's durable. It's the right. Uh, I don't think it's well. Here, here is this is totally subjective. I don't think it is um, a, a crazy design or a, you know it's not overly elaborate from a design point of view. It's relatively simple and perhaps um, um, okay with the uh, the environment. Um, this becomes looking, this one here, it becomes looking like it belongs in a schoolroom. Okay. So, so John, you know, we were just trying to help you if um, someone okay. proposed these, um, do we need to be more clear in our guidelines um, in terms of simplicity of design? If, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think we can help everybody. If you and John work with the uh, people around the market space and can find a couple of options that all of you agree are suitable. Just narrow it down, you're saying. Yeah, and then only publish those and maybe a few others that we might add, you know, we as the commissioners with John's help. Okay. And then let it go at that. Don't post anything as an example of what is not acceptable. I have run through that as a homeowners association president. Once you show something that you are saying is a good example of unacceptable, somebody is gonna get that and like it and then say, but you published that. Yeah, this so is, here's why. Is <laughs> unnecessary headaches. So I hear what you're saying. So I guess what you're saying is, Let's publish a few things that are acceptable, and by exception, other yes. things might be approvable. Ex exactly. Yeah. So I went on with with here. Here are things that are not acceptable, and why I yeah. could go on to why not. Um, That's good for our discussion, but I would not put that forward to the. Board. All right. Good. All right. No, Tim, why do you not like the the uh, the purple modernist? Um, um, purple is a triggering color for me. It, <laughs> You're not a raven. I had some very bad experiences with purple puppets when I was TMI. TMI. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
No, it's so brightly colored. It's another thing, oh, brightly brightly colored, colored, over right. design. Right. Um, we were pretty clear as uh, commissioners that not nothing plastic or some, um, uh, uh, polyvinyl, polyvinyl, mm -hmm. love this chair, but not appropriate. Okay. And then this right. one, I right. love it. Um, is that resin? That is totally resin. Oh. This one was a challenge. Um, it is, it is, but John instructed me and said, don't open the door to uh, vinyl resin yeah. on anything. It'll just get you uh, us in trouble. Yeah. These are not portable. These are both Victor Stanley, which are great designs, but we're trying to say not, they're, they're, these should be portable and lightweight. Um, so um, I, can, Tim, can I bring up the, uh, the item in the email that I sent? Which email, John? I, I thought, uh, did you not get one this afternoon for me about yesterday's meeting with the uh, the restaurant? You know, John, I'm retired. My life is so busy. Uh, I don't read my emails, but like once a day, and that's like at 6.30 in the morning. So can you enlighten me? <laughs> okay. So uh, I meet weekly with the market uh, space yes. group, uh, yep. and uh, that's on Wednesday. This Wednesday... Uh, we uh, met and the Annapolis Fire Department came with fire trucks. Um, and this is to determine the accessibility of Pinckney Street and uh, Middleton Tavern and uh, uh, McGarvey's and all of those, uh, those buildings uh, in and around uh, Pinckney and Market Space. Um, and uh, they were demonstrating turning radiuses and the amount of space that, that uh, the city's rather nimble uh, and maneuverable uh, fire truck. Uh, so this was yesterday, right, John? This is yesterday. And it was quite surprising. Um, the fire truck turning from Randall Street uh, on into uh, market space in front of Middleton uh, took virtually the entire road. Um, of course. And it changed the, it instantly changed the layout for Middleton Tavern, but uh, the, uh, the officers from the fire department uh, said, so you may have a line of tables on either side of uh, uh, the road here, market space next to the sidewalk, but they need to be extremely portable so that they can be moved in an instant. The funny thing is, as soon as the truck is in market space, uh, it can, as big as they are, they can drive up Pinckney Street because they proceeded to drive up Pinckney Street. So I've been working to make sure that we have open spaces, but this opens it even more. The statement from Middleton was, can we have something that is the equivalent to a picnic table that we can pick up and move onto the sidewalk uh, with great haste at a moment's notice. And I thought, okay, so here's, here's the possibility of uh, uh, an exception. I said I would bring it up um, and I, I have looked at wooden and metal uh, picnic tables, not quite like the Victor Stanley there, uh, which is more permanent, but things that are more portable. Um, and uh, just have the caveat that uh, for, and of course, what's, what's above also, that uh, if, if we're going to be uh, uh, allowing these things, um, and I'm, I'm assuming that we are, benches and picnic tables. Uh, well, under our current, the way it's currently written, both all of these three images I'm showing right now would be compliant. Right. So, but they would want them to be the pieces to be connected and uh, portable. So I don't know what the, well, uh, right. I, I would say portable means, well, uh, we had, I think I want to, I looked at today what we, we were as portable comma, not connected to the sidewalk. We need, we, what we mean by portable is moving, moved instantly. Yeah, right. so I think there might be some word, a, a, a removal, a comma, but yeah, I don't think we want 
um, nothing can be attached to the side of it, but also can't look, can't, this is not movable instantly right. down here. Well, right now they have vinyl uh, collapsible uh, uh, picnic tables. And they're vinyl, think, so that wouldn't, right. be, that wouldn't work. Right. So, no, of course that wouldn't work. Um, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I will respond to uh, her request. It's Chris Noakes from, uh, from Middleton Tavern. But it's interesting because there's a lot of ready, shoot, aim on this uh, market space project. You know, oh. I'd, I'd been told repeatedly that uh, the fire marshal had been consulted and that uh, uh, his <clears throat> approval had been given uh, for uh, the different seating layouts. And when I actually spoke to him, his eyes went wide when I showed yeah. him the design. They were like deer in the headlights, like what? what? Yeah. It, so everything well, I, gets checked. Yeah, as I've said, we are certainly want to um, comply with all, all of their guidelines, but that's, that's their responsibility. Um, public safety is number one. And um, we're just asking for design guidelines that enhance the quality or preserve the quality of our, our environment so tim yeah. could, could we um say that a chair is a chair a table is a table connecting them excludes them uh, yeah we can yes if they're physically connected yeah they're not a, they're, they just are not approvable uh, uh, yep i think that's easy to put yeah, in i like that what, what, what we mean by furniture is not you know, I'll, I'll come up with a word uh, to, it's easy to, to do that. Thanks, Bill. I like that a lot. Yeah, I think that automatically uh, prevents, this is a wonderful design in certain cases, but not, not in, in this case. And neither one of, neither of those are chairs or tables. They are some hybrid between two animals that shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bill, I, I really appreciate that. It, it, it makes yeah. taking care of picnic tables outside yeah. of Acme. Yeah. Well, you, yes. Yeah. 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 Can we sneak out there in front of Acme and kind of burn those? Or, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 You can, Bill. <laughs> well, I'll ignore, I'll deny that I ever heard you say any such thing. I, I said nothing. <laughs> um, I, I think that what our, where I came down on that discussion of just rustic picnic tables, they're not compatible with the no. uh, building facade period. And no. so we have that way up there in, in the guidelines. So they're just not compatible. And so I, I think we're good there. I think that John could point to that and say, this is not compatible with this facade. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Only a few more. Heating devices, we want them to be, if they're, they're going to occur, um, we want them to be thin, um, don't obstruct the view. Um, obviously public safety is an issue here too. These kind of things are okay. Um, these totally block the view, they're monolithic. Um, and this one. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's a heating wells. It looks like a robot. It looks like the war of the world. Like the war of the world. You're yeah. <laughs> so, so this is just yikes. Yeah. That's my new. Oh, I um, thought that I was the actual it. name of it. I saw, I saw it actually portrayed in a, an environment um, that was a, a restaurant environment. It's like, okay, your your meat's not well done enough. Just hold it up. I asked for medium rare. This is rare. Okay. All right. Next. <laughs> Umbrellas, lots of choices here. Um, color, uh, so um, middle thing, middle. Middle, not middle, middle, middle mass. Um, these might work. What do you all think? I don't like this like, style. Oh, I like that style. <laughs> do you? I actually do really because cool. if, if you get, if you don't get the small ones, if you get the large ones, you can have one setting of a corner of a space that covers two or three tables. Yeah. Could, could I uh, mention the, the comments um, from the restaurants? Yeah, uh, okay. of course, John, you know what? Yeah. 
I, I, we always want to hear because you are on day to day. Um, so we're talking in abstract here. So w- what are you hearing from them about these um, choices, for instance? So especially with the uh, the quick removal for of, of furnitures and umbrellas for uh, McGarvey's. Um, I've been told by the restaurants, any table that doesn't have an umbrella will be an empty table. And of course, I think to some degree that's, that's not cool. end, yeah. but, but uh, they, they will want umbrellas for each table, but if they have to move them quickly, it's difficult to move a table with an umbrella going into the middle of the table. So they asked for uh, uh, an approvable umbrella with a stamp. Like these, these yes. they're called cantilevers. What cantilever, called. yeah, that's what they asked for. I could live with that. I, I think if they're not too dense, I mean, the, the issue, yeah. You know. Yeah, that's that's the issue, it's density. It's not what they're standing on. It's how they obstruct the view and how, you know, how many poles. Yeah. Are... Well, we have a height and, and a width limit. We do. So, we do have a height and a width limit, and um, these we might want, need to look at the width, or the height on some of these. But I think right now, the way our guideline is written, these cantilevers would be approvable, um, and we haven't set a standard that one there's a ratio. You know, there's one umbrella per table, so we're we're. But we've also said no tents, so this is not a tent. Okay, and all right, so I, um, other, Bobby, you, you were not happy initially with these cantilevers. Um, I just think the frame, the frame is too big and uh, intrusive. I prefer the slender pull down the middle, but if you guys think they're okay, I would, I would urge us to do one per table as opposed to this big monstrosity that covers several tables. Okay. Oh, I, I think you're right. I, uh, <laughs> we, we've limited it to eight feet. This can't be. This can't be long, wider than eight feet. Mm-hmm. The thing is, as a diner, it's nicer not to have the pole in the middle of the table, which is probably what yeah. the is actually complaining about, not the fact that it's hard to move. Well, yeah. actually, as a diner, I'd really like to have an umbrella <laughs> with this facing down on me. Um, <laughs> and here's another. This is extremely simple, but it's square. Yeah. Um, Color, color wise, how do we feel? You wrote some language before, I think. That I I it shouldn't be strikingly bright is the word yeah, I, 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 yeah. I thought we were talking about earth tones. Yeah, that's no, what we, I was no, we, says, uh, we said not strikingly bright. Well, that's that important. They all, they all understood that. And <laughs> all, of these, all of these, I think, would be okay with not strikingly bright. Red? Uh, terracotta. Depends on the material and the and the. That's right. And uh, we said it must be a canvas or uh, yeah. yeah, that's terracotta. <laughs> um, those were all okay. Uh, and then down here, <laughs> no. Bottom right hand corner, perfect. No, perfect example. <laughs> this is way too big with a thing. That, that's and then cool. finally. No, no Chinzano. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm suddenly right. thirsty. So but going back to John, uh, to Will's point, we, we should show what is consistently compliant and then um, on a case-by-case basis, you know, don't show non-compliant, show yeah. compliant. And yeah. I would say compliant. with the color, say solid color. So we don't get all right. All right, color. solid color. Yep, yep. Can we also say it's a uniform co- color for the vendor, so they don't have one that's terracotta, one that's green, one that's yes, I, one. Uh, yeah, I, I think that um, I haven't, I don't have it in front of me, but um, I, I think we did write that it should be a consistent okay. color per institution or per okay. establishment. Yeah. Sorry, I don't have it. No, I don't either. But I, I, I can look we, at it. We, we pick that up. It, Per establishment, a uniform color. Otherwise, um, oh, look things. what's available now. <laughs> oh, let, I want the tiki one. And um, we should say and, no plastic bases. 
Well, we didn't even talk about bases yet, John. Um, okay. I don't, I, we, we can't see them. Um, uh, if, uh, if you can, if they're visible, if they're visible, they shouldn't be plastic. But if you can't, I don't know. That, that's yeah, a whole new topic, John. It, this is just what I was talking no about. To decide what's visible and not. Yeah, this is just what I was talking about. You don't want to give them that latitude because they'll no say, plastic. Uh, we're going to put it here. It's not visible. Maybe they're right, but then tomorrow it'll be someplace else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bases should be um, um, uh, uh, the same material we, we already talked about. They're, they're going to be ha going to have to be metal, not wood, but wooden or or metal base. Yeah. Well, it could be wood, metal. Could it be concrete? Concrete. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Painted concrete doesn't make it easy to move, but it definitely. Well, it would be yeah. Oh, look at that! Uh, and that, that was it. Easy to move with wind blowing it over. That's. Uh... Well, the thing is, what whatever they put down there has to be heavy enough to hold it. So whatever they put down there is not easy to move. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Um, and again, we're interested in the design aspects of them, not the public safety aspects. As theoretically, there's public safety issues with any umbrella, but we're we're just talking about design. But yes, watch right. some of those tornado videos. <laughs> Stuff that gets picked up is amazing. Absolutely. Okay. So when I'm um, I'm taking away is that I should simplify this document to the things that we believe from the beginning here um, are, here are examples of things that John can uh, approve administratively. Remember, this is going to happen yeah. administratively unless John feels that he needs to kick it yeah. to us. And, and Tim, that's really my, my bottom line for me. Yeah. It's so that John... Somebody comes in to John and says, I want to do this. And John says, well, you can do any of these. Just take your pick. You can do any of these. And they look at it and say, oh, yeah, okay, we'll do that. Done. All right. You know? Tim, okay. I had a question on the, um, the heating ones. Um, those were all very vertical. Um, what about kind of like table backyard ones that aren't meant to be like yeah. – there was one in there, had a fire there. pit there. There were there. fire yeah. pit. Is that in the acceptable category? Like this one, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah, I th um, it's not. Yes. I think okay. if you were, on my opinion, if I look at our guidelines, it doesn't obstruct a view. Um, it actually becomes more like a table. Uh, it should be metal. Obviously, these things are generally going to be metal um, and not. Yeah, plastic. I didn't see that. That's what I was looking for. I didn't see it when you scrolled through. No, I scrolled this. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I think this kind of thing. Um, and there's probably a lot of examples of this type of thing that would probably be compliant. Uh, there, OK, you know, I just want to make sure we were covering that. Yes, I, 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 I think that we're going to see this. Um, yeah. That's, they're becoming more and more popular, you know? Absolutely. Right? Especially with the, you know, just outdoor dining, right? There's plenty of instances where they're not even going to have a table for a meal, but just drinks or something like that. So. Exactly. Yeah. I think this is going to be a long-term um, thing, uh, not just reaction to outdoor dining. For the city dock, especially with the idea there, of all those activating that space, this is would be a way I would expect them to do that. Yep. I, I think maybe we would, uh, th these things tend to be pretty consistently designed at about two and a half feet high. But the concept behind this is it doesn't obstruct a view. Um, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I was, I, I, like I said, I missed it when you scrolled through. So. No, that's a, that, no problem. I, you know, so. Tim, um, this is Kim. Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, one of the things I think hasn't shown up much at all is radiant floors. I mean, there's lots of options for putting uh, warm uh, warmth in the floor and he heating up things without having obvious heaters and things like that. Um, what 
are we seeing anything proposed like that? Or because I think a lot of these um, vertical heaters project heat, but that a, actually a, a radiant floor offers a lot um, more substantial benefits. That people feel warmer if uh, yeah. if the it's the heat is coming up from the floor. Haven't we forbidden um, ground coverings? Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, that can, that would require a an owner to own the floor <laughs> and and once it's down, it's hard to take up. Our right. guidelines right right now are 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 directed at use of outdoor space that is um, public. Um, so. Um, I don't, we haven't thought of that, but. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of thinking we might need to think about it. This is going to be coming a long, long-term thing. Yeah. Well, because, I, it, yeah, I think of some other things project having heat more than they really provided. Right. Well, well, I mean, I, right now, I'd love a radiant floor on my feet. <laughs> So what I could I could see happening uh, with that if if we were to approve uh, as let's say raised uh, uh, flooring uh, in line or at the level parklets you mean of the sidewalk is they would put the propane tank in a uh, in a planter bottom because we don't want propane tanks visible so we want them contained. Yeah. No, I'm talking about electric radiant floor. Okay, so that that just means a wire going across yeah. the uh, the sidewalk, or uh, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I that would be a design. That would be a building code. But again, I'm very happy to always stay in our sandbox. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, well, it, I think it might be a better sandbox. solution in the future. Well, I can yeah. I can tell you, I'll never uh, I'll never suggest it. Uh, because it will be a, a thousand degrees of difficulty with Clinton Pratt reviewing everything. It's uh, it will not be an easy approval. Hey, that's an idea. If we don't want it, let's just have Clinton re re review it today. <laughs> Put that in there. Clinton must review these items. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the most the most feared name. Um, Okay. okay. Well, well I, I think it might be a future consideration for sure because uh, you know we're adding a lot of elements that could be yeah. you know taken care of in a in the base plane, basically. yeah, and people would feel more comfortable. Yeah. So in, in colder weather, if we're seeing this is a long term thing, it's you, more you, expensive. You got, you got a good point, yeah. and it is a long term thing. It's this will. This is going to exist for the duration of this administration. Sure. That's what I or, or the next generation. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm not that optimistic, John. I have a feeling once it goes in, getting it out is going to be a huge yeah. issue. Oh, I think it I think it's almost here to stay. So yeah. that's why yeah. that's why I was wondering about the the raised the raised floor. Um, because that will be a request, just the way uh, uh, restaurants built onto the mayor's uh, uh, reused, uh, what was that? Was that the bike path, the wrong way bike path? Uh, I don't structure. remember. Um, like, yeah, the bike path. On, on Main Street. Oh, no, no, I don't remember that. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, there were little, there were uh, platforms that were in line with the height of the curb that extended uh, and, and leveled between sidewalk and, yeah. and uh, yeah, have, dining and parking space. Yeah, not to prolong the conversation, but um, too much. But John, have there been, this is park, you're talking about parklets. Have there been more meetings about parklets on Main Street? There's, oh, it's coming. Uh, there's, there's one, there's- And you're involved. All I care about personally um, for me is that they are including you in the discussions. Um, there's one in particular uh, that's 1771, uh, which is at the corner of Fleet and uh, Market Space. Uh, and uh, I think the there rear, are the oh, rear ends. 
Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's the first, I haven't heard anything from, uh, buddies, um, and the, the blonder group, but I'm sure they're coming. Well, and buddies has barriers up now. They have a permit in or something. I have to go back to look that has to do with it. Yeah, they have, I believe they have, they have it for the barriers up and picnic for tables 10 by 30 feet. I think what they have in their permit, but it's much larger than that. So, so you're saying they've already, well, remember there's a, the mayor declared a state of emergency to b before, no, I won't even go there. Um, yeah, right. right. Well, <laughs> he, he declared a state of emergency and uh, the, uh, the upshot was th that there will be uh, outdoor dining, even though the state of emergency ended in November and outdoor dining uh, was, right. was to go away. So it's it's now a state of emergency. I and after that it will be parklets, parklet applications. And so my question is: Are, are there weekly meetings about parklets, and where are they being proposed? Right, right now, seventeen seventy one is the only one that I know about. Unless uh, Bill, you you're suggesting that that uh, Buddies is going to apply for a parklet. No, I, I was looking at the permits in review today for another one, and Buddies came up as having a basically a parklet that I believe it was 10 by 30 feet. They currently have barriers up that take out all three buildings down there. 100, was it 100, yep. 106, 107, mm -hmm. right. all right on up to the, uh, so um, they definitely are planning you know, to do something and the permit, they may just be waiting for that permit to clear. Well, I'll, I'll look into that. Well, they've taken over the parking places. Yeah, the Taking parking places have been claimed. Yes. Well, they have to pay for the parking spaces after the state of emergency ends. Which, that ends before, on the 31st, doesn't it? Before they, before they got them for free. Oh, March. Right. Yeah. yeah. So out, outdoor dining right now isn't very popular. Well, it, it's pretty cold. Yeah. But uh, you're... You're right. They're they're probably staking uh, staking out where they want it to be, and the barriers are there. Buddies does not call me for permission. Buddy, Buddy, Buddy has, has never called call call forgiveness. For Buddies doesn't seem to call anyone. No, right. Buddies does what they want to do. They ask for forgiveness. It's for cold. Permission. It's cold. This is what you need. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry. We are still being recorded. Um, no, well, I'll say it to his face. Exactly. Well, it's just it's just true in in my, in my experience. But I'll I will talk to uh, uh, code enforcement, and then I'll also talk to uh, to buddies. Yeah. I'll find out what's going on. All right. I appreciate that. Okay. Um. So I've got some additional points from your comments um, that I can add to our guidelines. We've gotten one public comment. So we're now at uh, like 16 or 18 days into the comment period. Um, in early February, we'll be at 30 days and then these guidelines will become, it, it, it will go into effect. Um, and then we will, um, we will, a commission will write a report to, to uh, council and explain the process to them. And then effectively it becomes ratified unless they change it. So it's an interesting new uh, way to uh, promulgate regulations. So that's where, that, where we are with this. So John will be able to use these in the month of February um, unless the city council overrides us basically. So uh, that's where we are with, uh, with those. Okay. Um, that being said, any other business? Yep. Yes. Bye. I got one thing. Um, I kind of want to just bring this topic up, kind of say that I'd like to be involved in it and kind of just take the temperature of the group. Um, a couple, I guess it's been about a month ago at this point, uh, Kim and Kevin and I took an online course um, offered by, and now the name of the group escapes me, but it was a great overarching program, reinforced a lot of the things that I knew 
talked about a lot of new topics. Um, and on the last day, they talked about outreach in the community and had a great series of examples of, of towns and cities with historic districts that had really done a very good job of reaching out to their constituents. And I think that when COVID is over, obviously, um, I would love to see us, and I say us as in the entire group with whatever comfort level each person has, kind of go out into the community after we've kind of put together a, a plan or thoughts or talking points, whatever you wanna call them, and kind of get out there and raise our awareness, build you know, some, some understanding of what it is we do and kind of help people, you know, understand what we are beyond what they read about in the Capitol when something goes haywire, yeah. basically. Um, you know, whether it's going to Ward 1 meetings, City Council meetings, City Doc Action Committee meetings, meeting with realtors or contractors, you know, all the people that in some form or fashion you know, intersect with what we do, you know, and it doesn't have to be going and making a speech. It can simply be going there and sitting in on the meeting and then maybe just talking for, for two minutes about what we do, how we do it, you know, pointing people to the basic things like the website and, you know, just talking about in a very high level form what we do, why we do it, and how we really are there to serve the people of Annapolis. Because as I said, and I'm sure we're all aware of this, there's a lot of misconception out there and a lot of ignorance because people just don't know who we are and what we do. So I, I would I would welcome that. Um, but I would say that uh, with many, many more investors buying residences and turning them into short term rentals, um, it's harder to actually reach the people who live in the district. Yeah. Because there are fewer now. Yeah. And that's too bad. But um, you know, if we if we can't reach the investors, maybe we reach the realtors who are selling the properties or the contractors, the architects, the, you know, whatever group is, you know, there's so many different people involved when something gets renovated, restored, whatever, built. Um, any touch point we can have where we build awareness and, and, you know, educate people, I think is a good thing. Um, I'm just going to step in here, but uh, what you were talking about, Bobby, it's called the camp program. And yes, it's that's it. The Thank National you. Association of Preservation Commission. Yep. They're having a, a conference this summer. It's in Cincinnati, Ohio. Right. Um, which doesn't, might not sound interesting, but actually. No. I, I know it sounds that. hugely interesting to me and a number of us have I think it might be only Tim and I have, have gone in the past now because so many other people have moved on but their their conferences Delightful. are great for talking about how to reach out to yep. your, your commissions and how to uh, communicate with them and um, I think Tim said there probably is funding through yep. Uh, the, the state for yeah. uh, as a certified local government for us to do this. So uh, if you haven't been before, I would really encourage people to go. Um, and because it's just a, it's a really useful tool and um, to go to, and it's this summer and they're having it actually in person. And they yeah. always, and the other part of this is, I just want to plug it because I've gone to several, is that uh, a town has to stand up and volunteer to take this on, to do this, and they do it to showcase all their best uh, assets, you know, take you on the tours, inside tours of everything they've got. So it's like going on a personalized tour yeah. of the best of, hist of historic Cincinnati in this year. Yeah. But uh, we've done, I've done, we've done several, done several I've done several yeah. years and I, and I keep running into Tim. I don't know why it is, <laughs> but anyway, I would encourage Norfolk, you. Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, yeah. Didn't go to uh, I went to Des Moines, which was Des Moines. fascinating. Yeah. yeah. And we, we can drive to Cincinnati. Yeah. So I would just say that it's a great resource to sort of rejuvenate oh. and re, yeah. re a mobile. I went to mobile. Did you go? Yeah. 
We'll put it out there. And Bobby, I hear what you're saying. We can go. I, these training opportunities are available. Um, uh, but uh, to turn it around and, and get engaged with um, with John, your department, and, and planning and zoning or community, anything within the community to explain. Yeah. Um, oh, no, it's, it's great. Yeah. I mean, anyway. and obviously, John, everything we do needs to tie in with what you're doing so that we, we carry the message you want us to carry. So um, I think you always have, frankly. Um, and maybe I don't express it uh, uh, enough, but I am truly grateful for all of your time, your interest, and your participation in this. It's, uh, it, you know, this is way more than just a job to me. <laughs> we appreciate that too, John. Yeah, but you, you're the one that interacts with the public the most, and you can tell us where, you know, where the, the, the pockets are that we need to be reaching and yeah. what the, the me- I mean, we all know what the message is in yeah. general, but you yeah. can help us really fine tune it so that it, it, it gets people ready for when they come into your office. Um, or even if they don't, even if they, even if they never, even if we're reaching people besides the homeowners that are going to renovate, building awareness in the community is a good thing. So that if something happens that, you know, we're involved in and, and the, God forbid the capital might not, you know, lay it all out as well as we'd like, we will have a reputation and people will understand mm-hmm. that we, that we're doing good work. I think it sounds, it sounds very good. And, uh, uh, yeah, I think that, uh, interaction with, uh, new owners is especially important if, yeah. if we have an opportunity. Yeah, John, I was envisioning a, like a postcard that goes out to all the addresses in the historic district. And I'm sure off of SDAT, you could pull the tax address and not just the, the address of the, you know, that's in the historic district and, and, you know, having webinars with the Realtors Association. Well, I've done, and, I've done that. Okay. Cause the, no, and uh, they, they actually get credit for our, they get, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't remember the last time, but Kevin, you're right. Um, the realtors are important. Um, and, and John, you, ha- you have done them and they get credit. So we can do that again. In fact, I, I think we actually have a little canned presentation already mm-hmm. in your file somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Roberta, I, I Roberta did it myself. Did Lisa and I-, and I did it and it was right. a blast. Uh, honestly, it's a lot of fun. Um, Tim, the other thing I was going to suggest is, you know, you've got like a basic one for realtors and then maybe a more involved uh, demonstration for perhaps architects so that, um, you know, there's varying quality of presentations that are brought to the commission. Interesting um, training. Yeah. And so kind of go through like a, a coaching webinar of like, hey, well, this is what the commission usually looks for. You know, are you providing pictures? From different areas and you yeah. know you've like say we've got varying quality of submission yeah, yeah. And, and we do know, that's a great idea when they come sometimes they come to us they're like unfortunately they think we're going to be this you know judicial thing and, and we're, we're you know we're really not and um if if they understand what a typical even just playing to a potential applicant what a, a meeting looks like would be helpful so just help them right kevin you're saying yeah i mean just all this if you want to do that handbook is probably not the best solution to getting no, the it's not. results we're always look we're looking for yeah, it's not it's you arcane. Know, tonight's meeting i think would be a wonderful example uh our discussion with sharon and joe uh and michael yeah. it was concise enough if you could just take that tape and have that available. That's a great. Yeah. This, this yeah. is with the way that an applicant who understands the process and wants to support preservation uh, values and their architect work with the commission and the staff. It was kind of all there in one pack. Yeah, yeah. that's a really good point. It was a, it seemingly simple. It was yeah. simple, yeah. but everything is every proposal 
I, I, I would through. suggest putting that onto the website uh, in the great planning idea. and zoning so that somebody could review it. Here's an example of a work session with the Historic Preservation Commission. This is what you can expect and what you need to bring. Yeah. Yeah. Just get the permission of the applicant to. Well, of course you do. Okay. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't I've think we'll have people do things you know. without thinking about it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John, I just sent you an email. The permit was approved on the 21st. Okay. okay. Well, it gives you the information. Well, you can look it up. My, my buddies at Buddies. Yeah. Buddies. Yeah. Buddy. All righty. They only do what they're allowed to do until they get caught. Yeah. <laughs> Just like a lot of people. Uh. <laughs> I've, I have some great stories, but uh, well, frankly, I like Kevin and like Harvey. They're, they're yeah. kind of interesting people. They are right. interesting people. All right, right. we digress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we are being recorded. My job as chairman is like, okay, digress. Um, all right. So, um, We're still uh, recording? Yes, yes, I think we covered a few uh, important things. Uh, we have a relatively um, short agenda in February. Um, I'll just launch out there that I think we I'm very happy that we're making changes to a bit of our guidelines and I'm just going to throw this out there in the next six or eight months I'd love to see us take on other components of the guidelines um, uh, under the same uh, ages or the same concept and I thought about it maybe we should look for grant funding to actually help a, a professional um, look at our guidelines and help us uh, rewrite them. Com uh, not com you know, not ground up, but I think it's we're, we're going to need a professional, I think, to help us. It, it happened 12, 12, 15 years ago. So I'll be talking to John about possibly funding grant funding to help us. Um, Is that available through CLG funding? I, 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 I just know. thought of it. Um, I, I, I don't know, Kim, but Grant funding is something that we we know is out there. Uh, we just need to try and find it. Um, but I do think that the furniture guidelines are an example, just one, you know, energy conservation, um, uh, you know, all sorts of specifics we've talked about over years. I, I would like over the next year, I'm going to introduce it now in the new year as something I'd like us to undertake. So, okay, I'm just not. I'm just not sure what's uh, what is available under CLG funding at this point. But we should make better use of you know, uh, yeah. you know, uh, training and a training opportunity. Yeah. You know, uh, because some usually they're coming up saying, "Hey, you missed you missed your training opportunity." <laughs> right, that's all we ever get. <laughs> well, all uh, all I'm really saying is I honestly believe we have the brain power here to do it ourselves. But it's probably not the greatest idea. It's not the most efficient way either. It's if we can get funding best. and have a professional who's done this uh, kind and of thing, we should take advantage. It's right. Mm -hmm. They're pros. They get paid to do this. Um, and Tim doesn't have will, the time. And also, it will move through the public process better if there are public, uh, um, you know. Yes. There are professionals who have done it. So I could gonna, give Tim but, a raise, though. Oh, yeah. Just <laughs> double the salary. Yeah. I, I, I Second. <laughs> okay. A hundred percent raise. Yeah. All right. That'll work. <laughs> Take it and to we'll the bank. Your Take bonus it too. to the bank. <laughs> and if our stock price goes up, I get, you know, a hundred percent too. All right. you well, go. I appreciate all your time tonight. Um, and I, I do agree. I think that the discussion on a seemingly simple um, pre-app surface some pretty important issues for all of us so thank you um a move motion adjournment. Move, move to move to adjourn second all in favor aye. 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 aye and good luck 